Hello, I'm Dr. Pete. Welcome to another segment of Dr. Pete's Keto Club. The motivation for this video came from a segment that I saw on, on both the local news and the national news about a week and a half ago that proposed that the obesity epidemic in both the US and in Europe can be reversed by simply calorie restriction and exercise. And I'll, I'll get into details in a minute um, uh, about the nitty gritty of their argument, but I want to state at the outset that what was aired on TV was a false narrative. And I'm going to present the evidence why what they suggest is false and secondly, why the research was done poorly and is, is based on uh, essentially false beliefs in, in regard to the science that's actually out there. Shown here is just uh, a, a shot of the uh, actual article where the segment on national news came from. The main premise of the article is that warning labels should be added to food products that will inform consumers how many hours of physical activity, like walking or running, that would be required to burn off whatever calories that they just consumed. So what's wrong with this idea that we can simply burn off the calories that, that we eat and lose weight? Okay, to answer this question, bear with me because I am going to use notes because I want to make sure that I get this right. So firstly, the paper was published in the Journal of Epidemial Community Health. The, the authors were Daly, McGee, Bayless, Combe, and Parrott. The paper is poorly done science and it promotes a false narrative for the following reasons. Number one, they promote calorie restriction. So what they want to do is have warning labels on our food that basically describe how many hours you're going to have to exercise in order to burn off what you ate. And so one of the elements in this is fear, right? They want to scare you into not eating what's on the shelf because they want you to calorie restrict. And I'm going to talk about calorie restriction in a minute. The second thing is, which is also a false narrative, is the idea that of the food that we eat, that the major components of that food, carbohydrate, protein, and fat, are all burned exactly the same way as fuel in our bodies. Th this is a premise which is called, which the scientists call calories in, calories out. The idea that it doesn't matter what you eat, as long as you burn those calories, you ultimately where this plays into obesity is the idea that you can shame these people. You can make them feel bad because of the weight that they have. In reality, they're not in control of that weight gain. And I'm, I will finish the video by coming back to that. So the two main things that cause this to be a false narrative is the idea of the calorie restriction, which I'm going to address in a second, that, that this is a long-term mechanism to uh, stop obes obesity or reverse it. And the second idea being that all uh, food components, carbohydrates, protein, and fat, are burned in our bodies all the same. So firstly, what is calorie restriction? Calorie restriction means that you just basically don't eat, right? You reduce the amount that you're eating every single day. And usually what doctors and mainstream people are going to tell you is that you need to couple that with some type of exercise, right? You want to be burning as many calories as you can, and you want to be reducing what you put into your body. And that way, you're going to be burning more calories than the fat that you have uh, available to burn that's on your body. All right. So the idea is, is that that you are going to lose weight. Now, what what's the the actual medical science say about this? Uh, what it says is that calorie restricted restricted diets don't work in the long term, and it's really simple why they don't. Because people get really hungry on those diets, and eventually they just say the hell with it, 
they can't deal with the hunger anymore and they start eating. And as soon as they start bringing those calories back into their diet, then they regain the weight. So basically, this is where this concept, and maybe you've heard of it, of yo-yoing uh, comes from. The idea that you go on this diet, you reduce the amount of food that you're eating, right? You lose some weight. Then you finally break down one day and, and have, uh, you know, you eat the cu cupcake, the sitting in the faculty lounge or in the employee lounge, and before you know it, you got your weight back, all right? So calorie restriction doesn't work because there's no long term to it. Eventually you're going to come off the diet, you're going to start eating more and you gain the weight back. Now the second reason why there's a false narrative in, in, in this paper is because it promotes the idea that regardless of what's in the food, that all the calories are burned exactly the same. And those guys should have known better. There's high quality science out there. This is This goes way back... This is like at least a century old, right? Food has got three main components in it. It's got carbohydrates in it, it's got fats, and it's got protein. And those three, we, we call them in the field, we call these macronutrients, but let's not get lost in semantics. These three food types, the carbos, the protein, and the fats, they, they get handled in your body differently, right? We, we are not cars, right? Gasoline is the fuel that we put in the car. And gasoline is a mixture, right? It's not just one chemical component. It's a whole bunch of different ones. But you put that gasoline in the gas tank, and then basically the engine's going to light a match, right? And you're going to burn that gasoline. And everything that, that's in the mixture is basically going to burn the same way. And you're going to generate the same amount of calories that are used to push the car down the road. The food that we eat isn't the same, right? Carbohydrates, uh, the vast majority of them that we eat are converted into glucose that goes into our blood. That glucose is burned uh, very much like gasoline, right? It's utilized to generate energy which our organ systems, our muscles, our brain, every, everything that, that makes us human, that operates or moves around, needs in order to power, right, those mechanisms, uh, the, the things that we do, right? But the protein and the fat, they're in different classifications. Take protein, for example. Some of it is indeed used as, as fuel. It can be burned. But much of it is used... At, for structural reasons, right? The cells that we have in our body, they have certain shapes that they take on. And uh, they have certain things that they need to do that require certain shapes. And quite a bit of the protein is utilized for that. Protein is also utilized in our muscles. That, in terms of my viewers, you, you should be most familiar with that. It means, you know, I'm moving my hands all over the place. How do I do that? by contracting muscles. What's doing that? Well, these are little protein machines that are that that basically compose the muscle tissue that I have that allows me to undergo contractions, right? And that's what allows me to pick things up and put them down or to run down the street when I'm out for a jog or whatever the situation is. Proteins also form hormones and hormones are going around and they're regulating all kinds of processes including our, me our metabolism. And then, then there's the fat. And fat can be used to burn as fuel as well. But surprisingly, and probably most of you don't realize this, fats are also used structurally, right? They, they're one of the major components, if not the major component, in the membranes of our cells, right? They, they represent the barrier between different things, right? Between the blood and, and the cells that are th that, whose function is on the insides of, of these barriers and whatnot. So the fats do structural things. And, and not only that, but fats are also involved in forming hor hormones. So like, what, not all the fat and protein that we eat is, is burned for fuel, right? There's other functions. So the fact that this uh, scientific article that's supposed to be offering us a, 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 a solution to reversing being overweight, right? Completely ignores this idea. All, 
all three types of macronutrients, the fats, the protein, and the carbohydrates, they're not handled the same, all right? And that, that is a very important concept in understanding why that when you eat something, you can't just go out and burn all of it off because not all of it is being burned. Dominantly, it's mostly the carbohydrates. And I'm, go I'm now going to come into more detail why this paper offers such a false narrative. Now remember, what these guys want to do is to have warning labels on food that equates the amount of time that they're going to have to be uh, active or exercising in order to burn off the total calories. Let me read you an excerpt from the paper. When a consumer sees a symbol that denotes that it will take four hours to walk off a pizza and only 15 minutes to walk off a salad, what do you think they're trying to do there? They're trying to scare the hell out of you so you won't eat, right? You're going to calorie restrict. Now, let's talk about the, what the actual issue is, what, what the driving force of obesity, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease is, right? It's, what it's not is overeating. So, since they used an example of a pizza, that's what I'm going to do. All right, so I went on the internet. I pulled down a typical pepperoni pizza off the internet. This one in particular has 20, 21 grams of fat, 44 grams of carbohydrates, and 16 grams of protein, which translates out to 26% fat, 54% carbs, and 20% protein, which, by the way, this is a processed food, which, by the way, almost exactly equals the percentages that you see in the standard American diet, all right? Because this pizza's got 54% carbohydrates in it. Now, what is well known and established scientific fact at this point is that there is a tremendous amount of evidence that indicates that, that the driver of obesity, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease is the standard American diet. And the driver in there is the high percentage of carbohydrates. And the reason is, is because the carbohydrates stimulate insulin. And insulin is a master hormone whose primary function is fat storage. Now, when you look at this pizza, the question isn't, can I walk for the next four hours? The question is, if I eat that, why am I going to get fat in the first place? And the reason is, is because you got 54% carbohydrates in there. That's a massive amount of fuel. And basically what the insulin is going to do is it's going to cause the distribution of the glucose that comes from those carbs into the organ systems, things like your muscle tissue and so on, until those organ systems are full. And it doesn't take that long to fill them up because they only have the capability of holding about 2,000 calories worth of glucose energy, all right? Fat storage, on the other, on the other hand, is massively different. We have the capability of holding somewhere around 40,000 calories. So as soon as you fill up all the mu muscles with that glucose, everything else is going to be converted into fat, including the fat that's already there. It's all going to be transported to your fat tissue, and that's where it's going to be stored. And as long as the insulin stays high, which it does on a standard American diet, right? Because think about what most of all of us have for breakfast and then for lunch and then for dinner, right? The carbohydrate load is high all day long, which means the insulin is high all day long, which means fat storage is going on all day long. The bottom line is you can exercise in a diet like that all you want. And unfortunately, you're not going to see the weight loss that you want. What you should be concerned about at the store is what you're actually putting in your body. 
You want to maintain a diet that is low in carbohydrate, high in fat, and moderate in protein, which happens to be a ketogenic diet. So you know what? Yeah, I think there should be warning, uh, warning signs on the food that we're going to purchase. And I'm going to show you what I would do if it was up to me to put a warning sh uh, sign on, on those food types, in particular the processed food that we buy that, are, that, are, that is on the shelves in, in the main aisles of the majority of our supermarkets. So I hope if you've learned anything from my presentation, you understand that you can't just walk food off. What you need to pay attention to is the proportions of the different macronutrients. That would be the carbohydrates, the fats, and the protein. And what matters most is keeping the carbos low. Keep the carbos low. And yeah, I love this warning sign. And if I was king for a day, this is what I would put on all of our packaged food and processed food. Okay, so in finishing, the ketogenic diet, so a diet which is low in carbohydrates, high in fat, and moderate in protein, has uh, several benefits. The first is, is that it's safe. There's plenty of solid data on this going back in now into the 1980s. In fact, going back even longer than that, but I, I don't want to go on about this. You can lose weight on a ketogenic diet without any problem. I've been on it for close to a year and I lost over uh, 20 pounds on the diet. Now I'm weight stable at 141. I'm 61 years old. I haven't weighed 140 since I was like in my 30s. That's how amazing this diet is. It's sustainable. Remember that on a ketogenic diet, we're not restricting calories. I eat between 2,500 to 3,000 calories a day. There are other uh, benefits to the diet. Blood pressure is lowered, all right? I've seen a 10 unit drop in my blood pressure since I started this diet. I'm no longer hypertensive, all right? You stabilize your blood glucose. A year ago, I was pre-diabetic. Within 52 days of switching to this diet, I had reversed the condition. And even if you're not pre-diabetic or type 2, the point is, is that on a low-carbohydrate diet, you will stabilize your blood glucose no matter because you're not going through the amazing swings that you see when you're eating the standard American diet. And lastly, if you do have a condition where you're severely overweight, you're obese, and you're tired of being shamed over the thing and told that you just need to run more, try the ketogenic diet because you're going to lose the weight. It's sustainable, and you're going to lose the weight regardless of whether or not you're actually exercising. That's the amazing thing here. All right, signing off. Uh, see you guys the next time.